Okay, so we're <coughs> we've been settling into our winter retreat now for about I guess about ten days, and uh, and it uh, so just uh, you know just like to encourage people to be <coughs> exploring how to. Make the uh, the meditation come alive uh, for you, um, and sometimes you know we get into uh, into ruts in our practice, get into ruts in our meditation, and uh, it's 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 important to pay attention to how to. Uh, how to approach the, the the meditation because particularly, especially in retreat, but certainly in in living, um, say as a monastic, uh, but as a lay person as well, um, the uh, the meditation really needs to be a a source of. Of uh, kind of well-being and and uh, uh, and a source of of uh, a source of happiness because it uh, <coughs> you know otherwise the the, you know, the it's just the nature of the mind to seek happiness or seek pleasure and and uh, if one isn't finding happiness internally. Um, Say within the meditation, within the recollection of the, of the Dhamma, then you'll start looking for it outside. You'll start looking for it externally, and there's you know, there's no end to that. And that's the whole point of 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 uh, picking up the the Buddha's practice is finding an an internal refuge finding a place where one is peaceful and secure within oneself and the meditation is a you know of course it's it it, it relies on the whole path the cultivation of of actions that are skillful and wholesome and you know, refraining from the unskillful the unwholesome <clears throat> but the there is a necessary place for the, the, the development of of a, a peaceful, a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart. Uh, in the, the that relies on the uh, the meditation, and and that's where one's say contentment and well being um, have to arise from. And as a Base, of course, the the meditation is a is is a tool for kind of unlocking that that quality of peace, but unlocking uh, say a deeper insight and understanding into the nature of our the nature of our being. But it's it's, you know, it's with that peaceful heart that we get to explore and investigate. Um, these, uh, they say, our relationship to the world, our relationship to to our our body, our mind, our feelings, our perceptions, our thoughts, uh, our ideas, and uh, being able, uh, say, as we uh, um, chanted this evening with the uh, with the fire sermon, uh, say, becoming disenchanted. Uh, becoming disenchanted with, I mean, in this in in that sutta, the Buddha takes uh, the eye, uh, the sense bases, and sort of the uh, the what one see here, sees here, smell, taste, touch, and uh, conceives of with the mind, and 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 all its levels of experience, uh, the the eye the forms. Eye consciousness, eye contact, feeling that arises from eye contact, and that extrapolate to all the the uh, sense being becoming disenchanted with all of them. But becoming disenchanted doesn't 
mean becoming bored and uh, uh, indifferent. Um, what it means is one's not hooked by it. One is actually has a perspective that one understands it deeply, and there's a a great sense of 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 well-being. And so, like, oh, now I finally understand this. I've been chasing after things that are completely unsatisfactory and frustrating for a long time. Uh, now I can put it down and be at ease. Uh, but it requires clarity. And that sense of, of uh, clarity is, is uh, um, you know, one of the first things you, you have to pay attention to in, in meditation is the freeing the mind from the hindrances. Sense desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and, 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 and remorse, uh, skeptical doubt. Those are the uh, five fundamental hindrances or obstructions uh, uh, to the mind. And the Buddha says these five, these hindrances uh, overcome awareness and weaken discernment. Uh, they, they, they create problems for fundamental mindfulness and understanding. You can't uh, see things clearly or understand things clearly as long as uh, any of these these five hindrances are are, are functioning. Uh, say as exciting as it may be to experience something that one desires, um, it clouds the mind. Same with ill will. And sometimes the mind gets really sharp because of one's upset at something or irritated by something. But it's, that's, that's the, the sharpness of delusion rather than sharpness of, of insight and understanding. Uh, there should always be a, a quality of, of letting go and relinquishment. Uh, that it attends to say, yeah, true, true in, insight, true understanding, true awareness. Uh, that sense of dullness and sloth and torpor is the kind of lassitude of mind that isn't really, isn't really sharp. Really, isn't taking an interest in in, in things clearly. Uh, it's kind of drifting. Um, that's not a useful mental state. It might be a bit of relief from your agitated mind, but it's not. Uh, it's not a useful place to develop insight and 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 understanding. So, freeing the mind from these hindrances. The the uh, restlessness and seeking out just something else to think about, something else to ponder, something else that uh, you feel you have to do or think or, or say at some point. <clears throat> and, uh, so the mind is always it's popping away and, and it's, it's, it makes the mind kind of unwieldy. It gets cluttered. Uh, doubts clutter the mind and make the mind yeah, uh, one of the images that the Buddha uses for the mind with hindrances is 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 like a uh, like a, and it's one of my favorite ones. It was with like as a a, a, a gold and, and you know, in most cultures throughout the world, you know, gold is seen as something that is beautiful with great value and and is used in different ornaments and jewelry and, and can be made into, into very beautiful, uh, beautiful ornamentation and, and, and jewelry that can be worked really easily. <clears throat> and and uh, 
Um, it says it's it's the ma the gold gold that has uh, accretions in it, uh, say iron, copper, tin, lead, silver. Uh, these all um, make the mind less pliant, less malleable, less less lustrous, uh, and and that uh, it uh, makes it more difficult to work with. So that gold more and more on its own. And that's exactly what the Buddha uh, compares these, the hindrances. And say the mind when it is it's in when it is freed from the hindrances, freed from the the five hindrances and uh, then the mind becomes pliant and malleable, radiant, lustrous, um, easy to work with. Uh, learning how to uh, Free the mind from these the, these these hindrances and paying it to, using it as a as a a a point of reflection in the in the meditation because it's uh, just reviewing uh, the mind you know, whatever object one is is using for 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 the practice and uh, just turning attention to uh, that reflective investigation on. You know what hindrance is is or is there a hindrance arising, or is there is there a continuity of of, of bright, clear mindfulness and and awareness? Or somehow I doubt it, but <laughs> but it, it uh, uh, you know this is learning how to to identify. The things that get in the way, so that that can be 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 let go. It can be relinquished. It can be abandoned. Um, and that uh, and it's just whether one is developing mindfulness. And mindfulness, of course, is 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 the foundation. Um, uh, and one, the the it says, you know whether one's developing mindfulness or developing developing the lucid calm of the mind. The Buddha, when he's giving instruction, is always pointing to what needs to be, be let go of. And often, it's it's the five hindrances are the, uh, are are the fundamental things that need to be let go. Of. But the Buddha oftentimes says, speaks in a in a kind of shorthand, um, so that uh, say like for the, the cultivation of the jhanas, viviche vagamihi. We which are akusale hidame, so secluded from sensuality, secluded from unwholesome states. Uh, these are the, and that's like a shorthand for these five hindrances. And of course, it can be expanded out to all sorts of of uh, permutations of these things that 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 uh, that do hinder the mind. And so it can be expanded out into the. Like there's uh, a different, different. Uh, there's actually different sets of upakilesa. There's a more refined uh, defilements of mind. But the hindrances are a really good structure to basically see these things that that stain the mind, obstruct the mind, uh, uh, reduce its clarity and 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 stability, um, and. Uh, because sometimes, just so, I mean, sensuality is fairly clear, but then unwholesome states, um, you know, can be it can be a lot, uh, and there can be a lot of different ways that the mind drifts into the 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 akusala, the unskillful, and uh, so getting some a bit of clear definition on on the the the, the obstacles, uh, so that one is. Is relinquishing or overcoming those obstacles, you know. Also, with with just the development of of uh, mindfulness, uh, the yaloke uh, bichadomana the the abandoning covetousness and grief toward the world. And I mean, the world is not necessarily the world out there; it's the world in here as well. Uh, anything that that uh, as says the Buddhists. Are, that whereby one conceives of the world and perceives the world, that is the world. 
Uh, so that uh, the the whole realm of of our mental emotional um, constructs um, are the world. Um, and do we want to live in a beautiful, peaceful world, or do we want to live in a in a complicated and and <laughs> kind of pathetic world? I mean, it's mostly. Um, mostly what people live in and try to and then wonder why they're unhappy so that uh, really paying attention to the relinquishing of of the those obstacles that that obscure um, a, a, a fundamental fundamental well-being so that in in the meditation you know again whatever meditation one picks up and you know one can experiment uh, with different meditations I mean there's most people will have a kind of like a go-to meditation that is like the foundation for myself uh, mindfulness of breathing has been my 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 foundation for well 50 years <laughs> so it's uh, uh, you know, I really um, was attracted to mindfulness of breathing when I very first started meditating, and and uh, it seemed to feel comfortable and made sense. But that doesn't mean I haven't explored and I don't pick up other themes or or investigations or ways of directing attention in 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 the meditation it's <coughs> one of the things that the that the buddha really encourages is that cuz again as i was saying you know sometimes we get into we get into ruts or we get into periods of time when when the uh, uh, the meditation or the practice is is kind of listless, or it's it's a bit, uh, um, you know, either scattered or or, or just not doesn't feel inspired, and you have to mix things up a bit and and experiment and see what 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 is what might be what might be useful, uh, what what might be be helpful, so that that. Uh, Exploring mindfulness of breathing and all its different different possibilities, which are actually quite quite extensive. The Buddha gives you know sixteen steps to mindfulness of breathing, and and all of that can be be explored. And but you know also what whatever the the meditation, one of the things that that the Buddha points to is is that. You know when the you know, when the mind is scattered, and it could be scattered through distraction or scattered through through uh, through dullness, um, uh, you know, could be scattered through you know, sort of various attachments or, or or aversions. But when the mind gets scattered, it's important that one lifts up. Um, a different translations a, a satisfactory a satisfactory image which uh, or a uh, um, a a pleasing theme um, it's, it's in in the, uh, uh, the uh, if I remember correctly the Pali is the suba suba nimitta which is suba is usually yeah attractive beautiful. Um, and uh, the nimitta is like a sign or an image, a mental image, and so that that lifting up a, um, but it's also because it can because when we think of say okay like a attractive theme or an attractive image, it's what would would kind of uplift the mind or direct direct the mind to more more wholesome states. Um, and and that could be, you know, could be recollection of death, or you know, could you know, you, you, or or corpse meditation. That could 
that could really, you know, get the mind uh, sort of going in a in a positive direction. It's not a sure, it's not a sure thing, uh, and it's, um, or it could be loving kindness meditation, which is you know more. I mean, generally, if one thinks of a a, a beautiful theme or an attractive theme, you know, loving kindness meditation or Recollection of of uh, uh, like the the anusatis on generosity and and virtue. These are sort of beautiful themes. But as I said, one it, it it's important to just sort of be, be willing to experiment. And sometimes um, the that that experiment entails um, some of the the more more, more, maybe more sobering uh, aspects of of uh, uh, of contemplation. Thirty-two parts of the body, um, contemplation of death. Uh, those are uh, the and those are are uh, like uh, there's a there's a set of meditations that are called the protective meditations, and there's four themes. Actually, when I was at what Nana Chat giving a retreat there? Um, of course, it's all in Thai, but um, but it was I, I explored those four four protective meditations, and there's two of them which are a bit more sobering. Uh, the the Asuba meditations, uh, thirty two parts of the body, and the the recollection of death, contemplation of death, Marna Sati. But also, uh, the on the other sort of side of the uh, the coin is is a uh, Buddha Nusati, a recollection of the Buddha, sort of inspiring the mind to uh, recollect the the Buddha as a refuge, recollecting the Buddha as a historical being, recollecting the Buddha as a as an archetype, recollecting the Buddha as a as a as a principle of nature. Um, what's the nature of a of a Buddha? What's the fundamental uh, quality? And that's, that's, those are these are like when when we pay homage to the Buddha, you know, we chant Arahang Samma Sambuddho Bhagawa, and and that's uh, um, if one sort of looks at the language of it, what one is doing is recollecting the wisdom, compassion, and purity of the Buddha. Um, and and that those are the that's the fundamental nature of, of the Buddha, that's, and and of course, that's the nature that the Buddha is wanting us to steep our heart the heart in the wisdom, compassion, purity. Also, just the the actual name the name of the Buddha, um, especially when you translate it into Thai, um, is this quality of knowing. This, this aspect of again the fundamental nature of the of the mind is that its ability to know, to be aware, to be present, uh, to be awake. Uh, this the, the the nature of the of the mind, the nature of of say enlightened awareness is this this quality of awaking uh, awake uh, uh, having truly awakened from the, the the delusions of of the uh, 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 of the heart and and a sense of radiance uh, and uh, the mind the heart the mind of awareness of, of true knowing uh, is uh, is it's bright. Uh, it's not. It's not dull. It's. It's. It's not limited. It's bright and expansive. So and just these are w- ways of brightening the mind, um, encouraging the mind. That's. It's a pleasing theme to explore. Again, it's. It's in the same way that that uh, contemplation of the nature of the, just the body can be pleasing to sort of look from a different perspective rather than 
kind of delusion and and and, and assumption and and uh, and attraction and and fascination and and obsession. And so, oh, it's just like this. It's just a collection of parts. Um, it's quite uh, pretty ordinary. You know. <laughs> um, also, the you know, say the part of the the uh, protective meditations and say metta and quality of loving kindness, and especially in meditation, uh, a a conscious directing of attention to uh, loving kindness and and picking up that theme or that not just as an idea although you know ideas precede but as a feeling and and using that feeling of of loving kindness the feeling of um the uh, like Bhante Ji always translates it as loving friendliness. Um, generally, as a just a well wishing, a general well wishing toward oneself and 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 all beings. It's as a as an emotional foundation for mindfulness and a continuity of mindfulness, it's an incredibly useful bridge to allowing the mind to settle uh, and to, uh, um, say, to absorb into uh, its its object, whatever it is. Um, and that's, uh, so it's an ex- extremely useful and powerful tool for refining the meditation and allowing the mind to to truly settle, because that that sense of that well-wishing and well-being, uh, there's an ease there that allows the mind to then, you know, to 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 move into the space of an object of attention, uh, and then be comfortable with that, settle in that, absorb oneself in it, and that's that say. Uh, um, and you know one can be using the reflective mind um, to, to sort of kind of like massage it. It's like in the <clears throat> the image that the Buddha gives for First Jhana, the, the 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 simile that's used of the bathman or the bathman's apprentice having, say, in the Buddha's time, be having like powdered powdered soap would be like probably like clay and and the different kinds of fragrances that would be mixed together and 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 then you put a little bit of water in and and knead it uh, and in order to mix it completely so it's not not sort of sloppy and wet and just falls apart or it ends up still dry and 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 powdery and 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 dusty uh, but it that that the water and the and the and the bath powder mix to make a a solid um, piece of soap that we can one use for cleansing. Um, it's a it's a lovely image for working with the mind, and you're using you're using thought at that time. Um, that's what say said we talk of each other and directed thought and evaluation. And so one's directing a a, 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 a skillful thought, a wholesome thought toward the the theme of of settling or relinquishing or 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 absorbing or, or and and then the 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 mind is reminded of what it is doing, and then one's evaluating: is it working? Is it not? Or the mind is the mind losing interest? Is it is it gaining interest? Is it is it comfortable? Is it happy? So that developing the the uh, the, the meditation themes <clears throat> again, it's just there's you know, there's so many different themes that one can be using. Um, Mindfulness of breathing is you got lots of different avenues to 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 explore. 
different different themes of of recollection and reflection. Recollection of the Buddha, recollection of Dhamma, recollection of Sangha, recollection of generosity, recollection of, of virtue, Silan or something. Recollection of the Devas, just that, that there are bright beings uh, that, that have re reaped the fruit of their kamma. Uh, and that's a, a fundamental aspect of nature that is available to us. Uh, so causes and conditions can be put into place. So it's just it's learning how to explore the meditation. And you know, we've got three months to to explore the explore the meditation, explore the practice, um, and learn how to to encourage the mind. That's why this sense of finding a, a, a satisfactory image or a pleasing theme uh, that the mind can take an interest in, because it's that interest in in the meditation itself that allows the 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 kind of the the, the energy or effort to be sustained and and then just be observant of what you know what different hindrances arise. How do I relinquish these hindrances? How do I how do I work around them? How do I how do I overcome them? How do I how do I make make my peace with them? Uh, <clears throat> how do I not get entangled in them? Uh, just this uh, exploration of of what needs to be done, and be willing to do it. Uh, just the, that's the uh, you know. So often we 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 you know when we drift, uh, we fa forget our initial interest in. In our in, in the Dhamma, in the in the practice, uh, in this path, so just uh, encouragement to everyone to you know, use the use the time skillfully, use it well. To offer that reflection this evening.